In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make basic vectored art in Adobe Illustrator. While this is an Adobe Illustrator tutorial, I'm going to start the designs on paper, which is how I strongly recommend you start yours as well. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and just drag and drop in our drawings that we made of the icons. So I took a picture on my cell phone, airdropped it to my computer, and now we're just going to drag it right in here. I'm going to scale it down, straighten it out a little. We're not going to go for um, like super accuracy in this tutorial. I mainly just want to show you how the tools work in this one, and then we'll go into using a more like complex grid system in the next tutorial. I'm going to turn the opacity down to 50%. And then we're going to go ahead and hit Command-2 to lock this into place so that we can draw over top of it. So just starting with this little globe right here, um, we're going to go ahead and hit the L key, which will bring up the ellipse tool. And then I'm going to go ahead and just kind of subdivide it using those lines. So I'm going to hit the backslash key to get the line tool. You'll see that each of these tools um, that I'm using the key commands for, they will highlight over here so you can see what I'm selecting. Um, but I, I highly recommend that you use the key commands. You'll save a lot of time like searching for things. So we're going to do one line across, one line vertically. And then if you hit the option key, you can duplicate these lines. I do option shift so that it locks it into place. I'm going to command C and command shift V to paste in place. I'm going to hover so that you see that little rotate tool show up. We're going to hold shift so that we can rotate this in 45 degree intervals and just like that. <clears throat> so the next thing we're going to do here is take our curvature tool and select right in the middle here and pull this upwards. And I'm going to go ahead and actually just delete this and use the same curve, bring it down here, and then flip it vertically. And we're going to go ahead and remove these two. I'm going to um, go ahead and group these, select the circle in the background, Click it one more time to make that the key object, and then hit align just to make sure that everything's aligned center. All right, command C, command shift V, and then we're going to go ahead and rotate. Now you see that your globe is starting to come together a little. Um, the next step we're going to do is remove these lines that are showing up outside of here. So a quick way to do something like that would just be to go in with the pen tool and we're just going to add we're going to add points right along the outside here Now that we've added these anchor points in, we're going to use the direct selection tool and click and then shift click here. And we're going to hit delete. And now we have our little globe icon. The next one we're going to do is this little text speech bubble. So we're going to go ahead and take the rectangle tool and then just stretch it right over top of here and we're going to go ahead and change the roundness of the corners so we're going to go ahead and round those i'm going to hit the direct selection tool and go up here to corners we're just going to give it let's try a 10 pixel 
Might be a little much. Let's do five pixel radius. That's pretty decent. We're gonna use the line tool. space this out a tiny bit more and then we're gonna select all these lines of text in here we're gonna go to our line tool and then we're just gonna distribute them evenly and then we'll hit command G and that's gonna group them and then we're gonna select the background box select it again center it both vertically and horizontally and now we have our little lines of text. And then I'm not really liking that they have like the blunt edges here. So we're gonna go ahead and select the lines and go to the stroke options in the right hand panel here. And then we're going to round the caps. And then this makes it just feel a little more friendly, soft. Um, and then the last thing we need to do here is go ahead and make the little tail on this beach bubble. So we will get We'll go ahead and try and do this with the polygon tool. Just make a triangle. We'll start with this and we're going to go ahead and select this in the background and you can do this two ways. We're just going to combine these. Um, the first way you could do it is using the Pathfinder tool right here. Um, this one unites so that will put all of the, uh, the two shapes that are overlapping just combines them or alternatively you can use the shape builder tool over in the left hand panel and you just drag. Either one of those, they pretty much achieve the same like end result. So there's really, um, it's more of a personal preference which one you use. We're gonna go ahead and round this corner. It's a little much, maybe we'll round it a tiny bit less. Pretty decent. I'd say we'll leave that for right now. We want to keep the stroke width the same. We want to keep the border radius on our shapes the same. Um, you can have like a few sharper edges um, in, in specific cases if it's necessary, but you typically want to keep the same visual language consistent throughout the entire icon set. So, um, you know, like rounded caps on your lines, rounded corners overall, unless there's a good reason to like um, a good exception for that. So I'm going to go ahead here and use a direct selection, select these top two corners, and make a five pixel radius. And then down here, I'm going to do the bottom two, do the same thing. And then maybe up here, I'm going to go into the stroke settings and just round those. And then another really um, interesting tool that you can use here is an offset path. So that will make kind of like the, uh, the bezel around the laptop screen. So we're gonna go ahead and do like negative five, see how that looks, that's pretty decent. And then in here, we may have to do more like a three pixel, not even two. 
just to make it feel even. Um, you'll notice actually, uh, I'll go ahead and do it for you, that if you do a five pixel radius, it'll look very unnatural. See how we have like uneven, so we wanna just make it uh, look as close as possible so that it's nice and clean. Um, and then what I'm gonna do is just bring this down all the way. Actually, I take that back, I'm gonna leave it. There's our laptop. And then we have an iPhone icon here. And in the future, we'll be a little more careful about making things like the, you know, consistent height and width and use a stricter grid system. But right now, I really just want you to be able to follow along and watch some of the tools I'm using and some of the, uh, some of the like systems here, like border radiuses, So this lesson is mainly all about just consistent visual language. So we're going to offset path this here. You can see did the same thing that was on the uh, on the laptop there. And we're going to do a border radius here, and then just for fun, we're going to add in the little. We're going to make people know that this was an iPhone. We're going to add in the little island. And then take these bottom two pixels or corners, make it like a one pixel radius. And then we're gonna take, so here's an interesting tool. This is actually a really good one. Um, we're going to go ahead and use this pathfinder to remove the middle section here. So what it'll do is since we've selected this rectangle and this rectangle, we're gonna make this section right here the shape, and this will be the negative space. And we do that by selecting this, and that's the exclude. And then what we're gonna go ahead and do is unite with the little island. And then we can go ahead and change the corners to rounded. And now we have our iPhone. This next one is a little, um, just like a little Wi-Fi icon. Should be pretty easy. Actually, this one, um, I'll show you a quick trick for this. So we'll just go ahead and offset path and we're gonna do, let's see what five looks like. Maybe we'll do 10, yeah. And we're just gonna keep doing that for each one of these. That's pretty decent. And then I'm gonna go ahead and take, actually we'll just make a triangle. We're gonna flip the triangle vertically so that the point ends right there. We're gonna select all. Actually, we're gonna go ahead and deselect the middle circle and then we're going to open up the full pathfinder menu and we're going to divide all these paths and then we're going to take the direct selection tool and just drag it right here hit delete and then we're going to go ahead and whoops go ahead and delete delete And then there is our Wi-Fi icon. And then what we want to do is change the caps to be more consistent visually with the rest. And then I'm going to go ahead and group this first row so that they all move as a singular unit. And those are our basic icons. So what I'm going to go ahead and do real quick is make another artboard just copy these over paste them we're going to align them center and then we're going to distribute them 
horizontally. You can see we're starting to get like a nice little icon set. Um, and, and the process will follow um, pretty similarly throughout all of these. So in today's lesson, we've covered how to use several of the shape tools here, the rectangle, polygon, ellipse tool. We've used the line tool. We've used the pen tool. And then we use the shape builder to combine shapes. And then we've also used the pathfinder, which will unite, knock out the center of shapes or it will divide all the paths. Using these tools, you should be able to start a pretty decent icon set.